Today we're van lifing in Redwoods National Park. Currently I'm on my journey of traveling from San Diego all the way up to Seattle. And today we find ourselves in Northern California. So obviously I had to stop at one of my favorite national parks, Redwoods. So we're gonna be going for a hike today. That's one of my personal favorite hikes because you get to see all the massive redwood groves. You get to actually go to the beach. And then we also get a super cool like fern wall canyon type thing. And so this is like a hike where you get a whole bunch of variety and why it's one of my personal favorites. So before we hit the hike, I'm gonna make some breakfast and then pack my bags and then we will hit the trail. All right, let's go. Out on the trail. So today we are hiking the James Irvine Loop. So we started from the Prairie Creek Visitor Center, and then we're gonna go to the Miner's Ridge, then we're gonna do a loop. So we're gonna go to the Gold Bluffs Beach, then go to Fern Canyon, then from there we'll finish up on the James Irvine Trail and come back to the Prairie Creek Visitor Center. So all in all, this hike will be around 12 miles, I think, ish. At least that's what All Trails says, but All Trails has a tendency to lie sometimes. So we'll see if that's how much it actually is. So I've done this trail before and it's probably my favorite hike in Redwoods National Park, just cause you get to see pretty much everything. You get the big tall redwood groves, you get to see the cool Fern Canyon, you get to go to the beach. So you get a little bit of everything. And one reason why I start from the Prairie Creek instead of going to the um, Gold Lust Beach, Beach and parking there and then just doing the short Fern Canyon part is because you need to get a permit for Fern Canyon or you need to get a permit to go park at Gold Bluffs Beach but you don't need to get a permit or a reservation to park at the visitor center and then hike there and I am notoriously bad at getting permits or getting accepted into the lottery so that's why we're doing the long hike, but it's okay, because I do like the long hike, because you get to see incredible views like this for the entire time. And it's not too bad of a hike either. Yeah, it's 12 miles, but it's only like 1,600 feet of elevation gain. So all in all, not terrible. So there's a lot of points where it's just kind of more of a leisurely stroll. I'm on one of the more uphill sections right now, which is why, of course, I'm breathing a little bit heavier. Probably should have recorded this part when it was flat so I could actually speak better than breathing while speaking. But either way, here we are. We're out on the trail, my favorite trails, and I'll take you along. Look at this massive tree that just fell. Well, not just fell, but fell at some point. Just like, look how big that is. Like, this is just one part of the trunk. And look how wide it is. That's just like a little teeny tiny section of it. 
Look how big it is. It's insane. Here, when trees fall like this, they're called widowmakers because they're so big. So if you get caught in that cross section when it falls, you're done. Redwoods is a bit different than a lot of other national parks because it's made up of a bunch of smaller national and state parks. So where it's something like Yosemite or Zion or whatever, it's just the one big park and then sometimes there's national forest land around it. It's like a whole bunch of individual state parks and the national park that, can, that got combined into one Redwoods National and State Parks. So right now I'm in the Prairie Creek State Park area. So this one paired with uh, Jedediah Smith are probably my two favorites, but, and that's because these two have like a pretty high density of the big redwood trees, which is my favorite part. But all of them on this area along the coastline are absolutely beautiful. And there's, they each have their own kind of special thing about them and different trails and stuff that you can do in each one. So definitely worth exploring and seeing which ones you like more. But Prairie Creek and Jedediah, blah, blah, blah. Prairie Creek and Jedediah are my two favorites. And just for views like this. <laughs> Incredible. Do you ever go hiking and feel like you're on a race with the people around you? Because that keeps happening to me. So there's this one couple I keep passing and passing. Whoa, look at the size of this tree first though. Massive. Like, ugh. I don't know if you can see how big that is, but it's freaking huge. These trees are massive, it's insane. So cool. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, do you ever feel like you're like racing against other hikers when you're supposed to be out on a leisurely stroll? Because that's how I kind of feel right now. So there's this one couple who I keep passing and they keep passing me. So I was like, I'll stop to film something and then they pass me and then I start hiking again and then I pass them. And then we just keep going back and forth. It's like, I know it's not a race. But in my mind, it's like, you have to beat them. You have to be better. But it's like, I'm just out here to enjoy nature and outdoors, but I'm gonna enjoy it so much better than you. That's a joke, but yeah, just, I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in that, but just how my brain works. So a little insight into Joey's brain. Sure, nobody asked for that, but you got it. You're watching this video, so that's what you get. tree stump I just found. We are out of the woods now and we are about to enter the beach. So I'm just coming up on the Gold Bluffs Beach campground. So if you get a reservation, you can like stay and sleep and camp here. And it's like a 
beautiful spot. It's right on the water, right on the beach. And then you get access to all the redwood trails right behind you. Beautiful spot to camp if you get a permit. All right, let's head over to the beach and see if I can find like a table or a spot to uh, like eat lunch or something. Cause I think I'll eat lunch here. Let's see what we can find. it to the beach this is such a cool beach because you get obviously the ocean and stuff right back there but then you also get like the trees and the forest like, literally right behind you it's just such a cool juxtaposition that was a big word but yeah, you can see like the green sea cliffs and the forest and the trees right on the beach it's really cool I took off my sand, or I took off my uh, my shoes because that's what you do when you walk on the beach. But this sand is wicked hot, so I might have to put them back on because I'm going to try and touch the water. But the sand is like burning my feet. Ooh. I'm gonna like dig in for a second, so it's not quite so hot. Yeah, I gotta put the shoes back on till I get to the water at least. It's like. Okay, let's try this again. All right, that's a lot better now. Whew. All right, let's go touch the water. Water's a little chilly. It feels nice though, after that hot sand. Woo! These waves are pretty big. I mean, look at them. I mean, they're all just coming up in here. I, mean, I don't know if it's safe to swim right now. I'm not saying I wouldn't try it, but it probably wouldn't be a you know great idea. Okay. This is still so cool though. Look at that. I think I'm gonna find. Oh, that was a wet one. That one got me good. I think these uh, shorts are uh, quick drying. Okay, I'm gonna get out of the water now and go and find a place to, to eat. I don't know if I'll sit on the sand. I'm kind of wet right now, so I might go back to one of those tables up there. I think that sounds like a good idea right now. All right, let's go get some lunch. <laughs> Not a bad spot for lunch if I do say so myself. It's really the main reason why I do any hikes is just to eat food in beautiful places. So, how crazy is it that oh, we were just like in giant forest with massive trees, now we're on the beach, like hundred, couple hundred yards away? It's insane. There's not many other places in the world you get stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna eat some lunch, and then we're just gonna walk along the beach for a little bit, and then our next stop is gonna be the Fern Canyon. So, excited for that, don't miss it.
Just left the beach and walking to Fern Canyon now. This part's like the only really boring part of the hike. So you can walk along the beach if you want and it's much nicer, but it's a lot harder because you're walking in sand the whole time. Or you can just walk along this road to get to the Fern Canyon trailhead. It's about a mile from where we let out at uh, Gold Bluffs Beach to the Fern Canyon trailhead. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Last time I lucked out and I actually hitched a ride with somebody. Maybe I'll try and do that again if somebody comes around. I don't know if there's any cars coming this way, but I don't know. We'll see. So I didn't have to walk this boring part. So we'll see what happens. Everyone's going the wrong way. Everyone's going back that way and nobody's going this way. So it's kind of hard to hitch a ride when all the cars are going in the wrong direction. It's gonna make me walk this whole way. Ugh. So sadly, nobody came driving by the direction that I was walking. So I had to walk the whole mile on the road, but it doesn't matter. We're here in Fern Canyon now, and take a look at the, the start right here. It's pretty cool. So this, is the, so this is the start. We're gonna walk across this bridge. I'm gonna go down there, and then in there is where it starts to get real cool. Let's go check it out. Have you ever been somewhere with just like walls of fur on either side of you like this? I think it's pretty cool. This is definitely a unique hike for sure because you get like the massive redwoods, and then you get this cool canyon with like all the ferns and the super high walls and everything. And then you even get the beach too. So I don't think I've been on any other hike that's quite exactly like this one, which is why it's one of my favorites in. Uh, Redwoods National Park. I also really like the um, what's it called? Like the Boy Scout Trail or like the Scout Grove and like the basically anywhere where there's big trees. I like big trees. I'm a big tree fan. 
Look at all of these downed trees. You have to navigate over those, and then it looks like you kind of go in between them over there. And then we still got the high fern walls, so. All right, let's keep going. And that was Fern Canyon. Pretty cool, eh? So it's pretty sick how just like the walls are lined with moss and go up like a hundred feet. It's pretty cool. All right. Now we are headed back into the land of really tall trees, which is probably like my favorite part. Right now we are on the James Irvine Trail and have about four miles or so until we get back to the van. And then that'll be the, the end of the hike. So this is probably one of my favorite stretches that we're going on right now just because the trees get really big and I like really big trees. Also the air here is like so fresh. I don't know what it is about the air. Obviously we're in nature and there's a massive trees and just so many of them but the air here it just feels like super fresh and you feel good breathing this air. Maybe I was in the city for too long before coming here but I don't know it just it's invigorating and just brings you to life again. So big fan of the air here. Also the part where we are headed right now has big Star Wars vibes. So if you are a Star Wars fan, specifically uh, episode six where they're on, what, what planet is that? Endor or the, the moon, forest moon of Endor, something like that. Somebody who's a Star Wars fan, correct me in the comments because I'm probably wrong. But anyway, that's kind of the vibe that we're going for if you haven't gotten it yet already. So we get some big trees and you just imagine flying one of the uh, like the space bike glider things like in between the trees, the laser shooting. So that's what I imagine whenever I come here. That's just, uh, that's where my mind goes. And so that's where we're headed now. And so let's, uh, go find Star Wars. Friendship. Too bad we're not going that way. Boo. Look at the size of the roots or the, on this uprooted tree. Look how many roots and how big it is. It's pretty crazy. And then there's the, the roots from this angle too, so pretty big, neat. big these trees are. I don't even I can extend it out far enough. Ooh. See? Look at that. Look how big this is. This is insane.
you can see the burning from the fire on the bark of this tree. This one happens to be dead, so the fire did kill this one, but not all of the trees that have uh, scorch marks or burning on the trunks are dead. This just happens to be a dead one, so. I swear that the trunks or bark is thick enough to keep them alive. Okay, so I lied before. So this part has definite Star Wars vibes. Like, just look at this around me. I feel like I should be on a speeder bike right now. Only way I'm getting home before dark. Actually, that's not true, I'm making fine. That's not true, the time I'm making is fine, but it would make this way more fun. But, uh, Star Wars. Meow. <laughs> See what I mean? Look how big this tree is. Let's wait till we get get up in there. Yeah, yeah. Like big tree. This belongs on another planet. This is not an Earth tree. Dang. Look at this. Huge. Pretty sure there's uh, more than one of those around here, but if you insist. Uh, home sweet home. I always love that hike. And by always, I mean the two times that I've done it. So it ended up being, what was it? Um, right around 15 miles and 1600 feet of elevation gain and did it in eight and a half hours. So pretty slow pace, but that was also including all of my stopping for filming and I forgot to pause it when I ate lunch too. So anyways, that'll do it. Finish hike, done. All right. Next it is, what is it? It's like almost 7.30 now, so it's about dinner time. I'm not sure if I wanna stay here and cook dinner or if I want to go to somewhere else. I think I might drive and try to see if I can find a nice beach overlook or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll do. All right, yep, that settles it. I'll just drive and see what we can find and then we'll start cooking dinner. On tonight's menu, we have some Thai green curry chicken. So hopefully it comes out good. I don't know. All right, let's hit the road and find a spot. So I was just about to leave, but I just saw there's a whole herd of elk right behind my van right now. So we're gonna not leave and we're gonna go watch the elk. All right, well, we gotta be quiet though. Shh. It's just about to leave. Look at all the elk.
check out this spot. Not too bad if I say so myself. Yeah, this'll do for a, for a cooking spot, I guess. It's a little bit unlevel, but we'll just deal with that. We'll prop up the stove or something like that and make it work, so. All right, let's get cooking. I almost need sunglasses inside my van. Dang. All right, so we're making Thai green curry with chicken. And so first, I'm just gonna start chopping up a whole bunch of vegetables and got the chicken. And then we just kind of throw everything into this pot here. And then that's like pretty much it, I guess. So I already went shopping before coming here um, because there is no grocery stores in the national park, obviously. So let's see, we we'll get some of our garlic, our ginger. Um, we're gonna need this coconut milk. I uh, just went with that one instead of like the one you get at Asian market because I wasn't there. Chicken broth. Let's see, uh, ground chickens for something different. Um, I have this already pre chopped chicken because it was on sale normally I would just buy like a chicken breast or chicken thigh and chop it up myself but that was on sale so I decided I'd do that and make my life easier as well got our Thai chili peppers um what else do we need in here basil I think we need some basil I can't I can't remember it might be I might chop some up um shallots shallots and uh those peppers are for something different and then some limes. It's a lime, Steven. And then eggplant. And I think, I think that's all of our ingredients that we need. So now I'm just going to start chopping all of these up and then we'll throw everything in the pot and hopefully we're good to go. I already have some rice cooked, so don't even need to do that. Nice, love it. All right, chop, chop, chop. First thing I'm gonna actually cut open this package of chicken and start getting this frying. Just to get a nice browning on the outside and then I'll just throw it in the, with all the curry sauce and everything. Pepper, not quite hot enough yet. So while that pan's heating up, I'm just gonna start chopping up some garlic. Cause we use a lot of garlic in this recipe. So that's some garlic. Whenever you have a recipe that says you need garlic, whatever it says, just double the amount of garlic and it'll be better. Trust me. All right, got our garlic all chopped, and I think our pan is feeling hot enough to throw on some of the chicken. So let's just throw on some oil, and some spray, olive oil spray. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. And then now let's just dump in this chicken and get this nice browning on the outside, and then we'll throw it in with the rest. Come on, let's go. There we go. Pretty cute. And then just dry the hands. So. Yeah, uh, things are hard with one hand. Did you know that? Spatula. Just breaking this up. 
And look at the sunset too. Was hoping I would have this food cooked in time so that I could actually watch the sunset and eat at the same time. But it's not looking like that's a possibility based on where the sun is in the sky right now. But at least we'll have nice views while we're cooking. All right. Let that sit. Got a little bit of salt on this chicken. So I've got a little bit of a problem. So I have this green curry paste that I got in this jar from the Asian market and you need a can opener to open it and somehow I don't have a can opener. I could have sworn I had one in the van somewhere. I mean, I've been living in here for three years and I have never needed to open a can. I don't believe that. But anyway, so we're gonna need to get creative. So I have this drywall saw, a um, screwdriver and a hammer and we're gonna get this thing open. All right. Let's see if this works. Seems to be working, I guess. You can just push it in. I don't even need the hammer, actually. No, I'm almost done. I'm almost all the way through. I may as well just go all the way around. And voila, look at that. We have our beautiful looking curry paste in our beautiful container, all ready to go. Fry this up with the vegetables and just throw everything in the pot and let it simmer and then we'll be good. It's also starting to get a little cold. Girl in a sweatshirt, big oversized sweatshirt for Arches National Park, shameless plug that I uh, make you sell these vintage National Park sweatshirt and t-shirts. I have a Redwoods design, but it'll have it in the van with me. Um, Otherwise, I would possibly be wearing that one. Yep. Also, I just put a spatula under the side of the stove to pop it up to level it more. Uh, because, see, when you have an induction cooktop and you're not on a level surface, it vibrates. And so the pans have a tendency to slide based on what angle that you are at. And so the, to fix that, I usually just throw like a spatula or something block or something under one side of the stove and that usually works but yeah that was something i didn't know before living in a van or think i would ever have to do so you gotta do weird things for van life to make things work sometimes also for wondering what i keep driving from in here this is my pantry as well so i have all of my like spices and cooking oils and stuff on this side and then on the back side over here is like a hanging wardrobe, clothes and stuff. And then we have a toilet and shower in there, which I will be using later. And then when I shower, I close that. So it keeps all the water inside. And there is a light in there too. So it's not super dark when I'm using it. All right, cooking our oil, heating up. We'll get too hot actually. Throw in this curry paste and the garlic. We want to try not to breathe in the curry paste too, because it's not very pleasant when it's cooking. Probably start coughing if it gets in your lungs <laughs> like that. Should I should have turned on the fan first. Garlic. Okay. Oh, not too bad. Not as bad as the first time I made this. Okay. I was like dying the first time I made this because I didn't know you were not supposed to inhale the fumes. So I inhaled a lot of the fumes and had a major coffee bit. I think I caught my finger a little bit on the curry jar with all its metal and sharp edges. I knew it wasn't a great idea, but I did what I had to do. Got the job done. And then we throw a band-aid in our food. Got some ginger and just get all right it in there. Chicken stock and coconut milk, and then we start really turning it into the sauce that we're going to simmer. One cup of chicken broth. Start with that and see how that comes out. 
down. Fresh coconut milk. And this go this goes by feel. Usually I would prefer like a whole fat one, but this is what they had at the store because I forgot to get it at the Asian market. So and I will. We'll try that. So right now it's basically a liquid, but it'll it will thicken up. I right, now we just add our chicken. Chicken's already mostly cooked, um, but we're gonna let it simmer in here as well in case there's any uncooked pieces because I don't think I cooked them all all the way through, but that's fine. Most of the time you wouldn't even really fry them in the pan before you put them in the simmer sauce. I just wanted to put them in the pan because I kind of like a little bit uh, brown bits on the edges of the chicken. So that's why I did it. It's just more of a personal preference thing, but I don't think in actual Thai curry that you would do that. You just put in the raw chicken in the sauce and let the sauce cook it. At least that's what I think. At least that's what I believe. I don't know. Maybe I'm making stuff up again, like from the hike. I don't, I don't know things. I just kind of do things and it works for me. Ooh, oh, oh. Oh, am I? I got the eggplants and the chicken in there. So now I think all that's left are the Throwing in the snow peas, throwing in the basil, uh, then probably some fish sauce and oops, then salt and pepper to taste and maybe a little bit of sugar to sweeten it up. I think people use sugar in Thai green curry. Oh, I got to chop up uh, the shallot for some crispy fried shallot that's going on the inside or on top of this for the mm, chef's kiss. So let's chop up some basil and throw that in there. Got to get our green vegetables in there, cause health. This is really starting to thicken it up too, quite a bit. So I'm not sure if I'll need to add in some more coconut milks to make to uh, thin it out and make sure that we have enough liquid to go. Yeah, they'll shrivel up and mix in a little bit, but I think I might need some more um, coconut milk in there just to give it some more sauce. Maybe some more chicken broth too. This we just kind of go by feel. Just a little of that. So I'll let this sit and simmer. Fish sauce, oh my god. So just gonna add a little bit of fish sauce, not too much. And a little. Oh, limes, I need to, need to add some lime juice. Wait. almost forgot just a little pinch of sugar a pinch i mean like a teaspoon to a tablespoon ish i've actually been pretty happy with the pantry and the shower design like this too it's worked out pretty good for me for the past three years of not losing that storage space but still getting an indoor shower after vikings or skiing or hiking like today so i've been pretty happy with it uh i just gotta chop up the shallot for the crispy shallots on the top and then i think we're good to go roll probably just do half a shallot for tonight let's say the other half or tomorrow mate now for the taste test oh, it's actually another half bad huh. that's kind of good even well I'm a little, uh, a little impressed with myself it's actually pretty good Definitely not like Thai restaurant or real Thai person cooking it good, but for me, white American non pro chef person, I think it's pretty good. You can see there's a lot of snow peas at the top, but those will get mixed in once I actually have some rice and stuff on there. But, well, oh, there we go. What do we think? Not too bad, eh? Uh, you might think it's bad, but I think it's pretty good. 
just gotta fry up some shallots and reheat my rice. Then it's dinner time, baby. Good thing too, because I'm pretty hungry after that that hike. So I guess it was what, like 15 miles. But yeah, so 15 mile hike, then cook in some Thai wood. All in all, good day at Redwoods National Park. I don't always cook after a big um, hike day like today. So a lot of times I'll either just like stop at the burger place in town or something like that, or I'll already have something pre-made in the fridge, but I didn't have anything in the fridge today and I wasn't sure what was at the nearest town yet. So I had this stuff in the fridge to cook. So I thought, you know, that'll be, be a fun time to cook. It did end up being a little bit later than I was anticipating in what I would have liked to start cooking, but yeah, oh well, it was just be a little late dinner. We'll be on a, a European time for dinner, or Spain time, whatever. It'll be to like nine or 10 o'clock over there. I also have to heat up rice in the pans or on my stovetop as well, because you know, I don't have a microwave in here. So that's the only way that I can heat up things unless I want to get out the air fryer slash pressure cooker, but this is already out, so it's just going to be easier to throw the rice on the stove top just to get it warm, and then I'll combine everything in the bowl. And then it's dinner time. Large bag of leftover rice. So I'm just going to put in a little bit here so I can mix it up. And then just get rid of these big chunks. Things can take super long and it took like a decent amount of time. The sun has officially set and it's like officially dark out now. I should be able to sleep in this spot here tonight as well too, so I should not even need to move after cooking and eating. So that's always nice when you find a spot that's like beautiful to wake up to, beautiful to sleep to, and then you get there for dinner time, and then you don't even need to move. So rice. Right. Rice is done, and the curry is done. So all that's left is to yep, serve and eat. The ladle to swoop this out. Or no, the pop the pan was just hot, so it got kind of stuck to it. No. Just take some of this. Scoop it on top over there. And the sauce is a little bit more watery than I would typically like, but it's too late now. I'm eating this now. I'll let the rest just simmer so it reduces a little bit more. There it is. Thai green curry by White American. Just through this, I almost forgot the most important part. The Thai peppers. Just chop up a couple of these real quick and then just throw them on top. It tastes delicious. me. Oh, all right. Now the test. See how we did. <laughs> Not bad, actually. No, I would eat this. Good thing, cause I have to. No, oh, came out pretty good. Mm. Wish you could taste it and let me know what you think. But oh well, maybe someday. So, bon appetit. I think that's gonna be about it for this video. I'm just gonna finish eating dinner and then clean up and go to bed basically. So thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. If you wanna see more van life, vlog, day in the life, stuff like this, or learn how you can be a van lifer slash digital nomad yourself, make sure you hit subscribe. But yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.